Many data tools today are code based and built on top of Python. And while you don't have to be a Python wizard, what that does mean is you'll need to get comfortable building and maintaining Python style projects. And one critical best practice you'll need to understand is using virtual environments. So in this video, we'll talk about what virtual environments are, why they're important as data engineers, and lastly, how you can create one to share with the rest of your team. So what are virtual environments and why are they important for us as data engineers? When you work with Python, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of different packages and modules. And in order for it to work as expected, you need to have the certain versions on your machine. And a virtual environment allows you to create an isolated little area on your computer to hold all of your dependencies and modules for a given project. And this is important, especially as you work more with Python, because you could have different projects that have different versions or different requirements requirements. For example, let's say you need a certain version of one module for dbt, but then when you create your Airflow project, you have the same module, but a different version. If you just do that on your computer without a virtual environment, then you're going to have conflicts. But by using virtual environments, you're able to isolate each of those versions. You can hop in and out of the virtual environment so that it always works. And you don't have to worry about conflicts happening between different projects and different versions. And as we'll see later in the video, you can actually get a list of all the packages in your project and the specific versions that you can then share with other people, version controller, and everyone can know exactly what they need to do to mimic your environment. Now that we understand what virtual environments are, how do you actually create one? And there's actually more than one way that you can do this. There's different programs, but the four most common ways are number one, using what's called VENV, which is a module that's pre-built that comes with Python. It's pretty bare bones if you just want to create a virtual environment and get things going, you can use it right out of the box. And that's the example that I'll show a little bit later. And this is what I most commonly use because all I'm doing is just trying to find an isolated place. I don't need to do a whole lot else. Now, the downside to VENV is that it is a little bit limited if you need some more features and it requires Python 3.3 and later. Another option is using what's called virtual env or virtual env. Unlike the previous option, this one supports both Python 2 and Python 3. So in a way, it does provide a little bit more flexibility. But the downside here is it does require a separate pip install to allow you to use it, unlike VNV or VEMV, which just comes straight out of the box with your Python installation. Another popular option is to use Conda. And Conda is a way not only just for creating virtual environments, but to manage all of your different packages and do some other things. So again, while it does have more features, that also means it's a separate tool to install to get going. Not a big deal, but just something to consider because there's a little bit more to it than just running an out of the box command. Another option is PyEnv or PyEnv. I haven't used this one, but I know this one allows you not only to work with virtual environments, but also switch and manage your Python version completely within different projects. So the one that you use obviously depends on your needs, how much complexity you want, maybe what your team's already using. But if you're just looking for something simple and you just want to be able to isolate your projects without really much else to it, then you can just use the out of the box VENV, VEM, that's what I use a lot, and it'll be able to get you going. All right, now to show you an example of how this looks, I'm gonna create a virtual environment and show you what it looks like in and out of it. So for example here, let's say we are working on a DBT project, data build tool, which is a Python data tool. If I do dbt version here, just in this regular directory, we can see command not found. And let's do the same for prefect version, prefect not found. Essentially, that means those modules, those tools don't exist on our machine. So what I'm gonna do is now create a virtual environment and install both of those in the virtual environment, and we'll see what the difference is. So the first step, I'm gonna use a venv, and the command is python3, dash M V N V. And then you give your environment a name. Now the command, obviously this is all going to be different depending on the option that you use, but I just want to show you the out of the box version of this. So here we could see it created a directory and built a bunch of stuff here to actually get into the virtual environment. The command is going to differ between whether you're on a Mac or Linux or on a windows, it's slightly different. So for me, I'm on a Mac and it would be source the name of my virtual environment which is my env dash bin slash activate. We're gonna actually run this file right here. You don't have to know exactly what's all going in here. All you need to know is that's where it's gonna run to enable or activate your virtual environment, which again, we'll see what that means in a second. Now, when I do that, you see it adds this, and maybe you've seen this in other videos and other projects. Now I'm working within this virtual environment. And to get out of this, you would do deactivate. And now you can see it's gone. And I can actually make another virtual environment. I'll call it another ENV. What this will do is create another virtual environment. So imagine you had a bunch of projects all with different features and then the same steps to actually create that one. So I could do source, another ENV, bin, activate, and now I'm in there. Deactivate, and now I'm out. All right, so now let me install dbt into one. I'm gonna go into my ENV and all I'll do is a pip3 install dbt snowflake as an example. 
what it's going to do is it's going to not only install dbt, but there's also a ton of other dependencies involved with this. So it's going to install all of these. But imagine if this was something you put on your main computer, but then you had other projects that use different versions of what we're about to install here, it would really throw things off. So we'll see what this looks like. All right, so now that this is installed, let's do a dbt version. And here at the time of this recording, this is what I have and it works. Now we installed it in this virtual environment. Let's deactivate. Now I'm outside of the virtual environment. If I do dbt version again, it's going to say it's not found. If I go into the other virtual environment, another env and do dbt version here as well, it doesn't exist. But if I deactivate, go back into my env dbt version. Now we're in this virtual environment and we should see it shows up. So hopefully this shows you how it's isolated here. And that's a really important concept to understand when working with Python. Now I'm going to go into another env and in here I will do a pip install prefect, which is another Python based tool. And you can see there are a lot of other dependencies and modules being installed along with it. Now the same would be true here. So the command for this is prefect version, and we would expect to see this work within here. And there it does. And now if we deactivate, we're now outside of the virtual environment and we can see it doesn't work. And the same would be true again, if we went into the other one, now we're in my env prefect version, and it's not there. All right, so the last thing I want to show you is how you can export all of the modules and versions that you have in your given virtual environment. And the way that you can do this is pip freeze. If you just type pip freeze, what that will do is print out a list of all of your individual modules and this version. So we can see this here, here we can see db4, snowflake, it's all here. So what you want to do is share that list with other people. And a way that you can do this is pip freeze, do a dash and into a file called requirements.txt. And this is a common way of sharing the list that you have. So now it prints out this into its own separate txt file that you can version control and keep in your project so other people can see it. Now let me show you how you would use this to build a separate environment that mimics this exactly. So I'm going to deactivate. Now we're back here. Let's go through the process of creating another virtual environment. I'll call this third env. And here we can see it here. But what we can do now is I can create the exact same environment based on this requirements txt. And the command for this is pip install dash r requirements txt. So it's going to read this file here. Again, imagine if you had that in a Git repository and you were just locally trying to mimic something and it's going to read that and install all of those dependencies. Okay. And just like that, we should have mimicked exactly what was in there and all the correct versions. And now if I do a dbt version within my new environment, I should have it. And there it is. So that shows you how you can use the different features here of virtual environments, requirements, txt to share your current dependencies of your project, give it to others. They can create their own virtual environment and you can be sure that everybody's working under the same situation. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of what virtual environments are, why they're so important and how you can use them within your project and to share it with other people on your team. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.